more than a space eater. He just made a great play there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he'll push forward here for a good little run as the clock continues to run. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Side Charles Davis on Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Here's Tony to return it as he brings it out of the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Mahomes to throw. Open man, it's the tight end, Kelsey. He's at the 30. 10, 5, and all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Travis Kelsey with career touchdown number 60. And the Chiefs come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. And this is no good. It's a missed extra point. Boy, in a tight game, how important might that turn out to be here as the second half rolls along? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From the six. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Titans offense set to begin the drive. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Henry. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Second down, Willis looks to throw here. This will go to Henry out wide. And some room to roll now. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 
A gain there of 21 yards. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing, and they got it out to him on the left side, and he did exactly that. Excellent run after the okay, catch. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot, he had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. From just shy of midfield, Willis over the middle, and it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. down Willis and this one is incomplete the Titans try it but ultimately they fail on fourth down and this defense is going to get the football back near midfield right at the 48 the KC offense out of the huddle ready for their next drive this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 98 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. And he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Mahomes now to throw. It's Kelsey on the ground. And he will have a Chiefs first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field. And a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. From the 22, Mahomes. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. But based on the play we just saw there, he might not be the guy you want to challenge in coverage on these all-important snaps. He certainly looks dialed in right now.
Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Mahomes going to throw. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco with his second touchdown of the night. And the Chiefs have taken a two-touchdown lead now. And oh, can you believe it? He misses another one, his third so far. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From the six. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side. Their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us. No luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge, and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again. It's complete, Burks. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And he'll be faced with a third and inches. He kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll give the Titans a first down. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On first down, Willis. And his throw here is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. A third quarter action from Kansas City, second down and 10. A shotgun handoff to Henry. Stopped up shy of the 45, despite some pretty powerful running. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain, considering the blitz that they just had against them. And they are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Yeah. 
The offense on third down tonight. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Back to throw Willis. Look at the side for one, and it's intercepted. It's Joshua Williams with a pick. And the Chiefs are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure but backed off, and it proved fruitful they get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there. Exactly as you described, an interception. So after the INT, here's Mahomes. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Yellow, yellow. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Now here's Mahomes. Got an open man, it's Valdez Scantling. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. And that'll be caught by Tony. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Hands it off out of the gun. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. 127 yards rushing for him here as he starts to draw closer to a thousand yard campaign. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means it really count. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked by Kevin Byard. And the Titans are right back in this football game. Now with that interception, you feel like we got a ball game again. Remember, two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days, not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no. But the way the game's played now, throwing it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Willis throws another interception, his third of the game. Picked up by Juan Thornhill. And the Chiefs are going to take possession of the football. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing okay. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Caught, Kelsey, left side. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion and would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete two yards good enough for a first now that's the way to do it hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and they added a little bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs so not quite a first and goal it's first and ten from the ten 
They fake the give. Now Mahomes. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he will take it on in for a Chiefs touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco with his third touchdown of the game, number 15 on the year. And the Chiefs add on to their lead, and they are also closing in on a fifth straight victory. They'll look to throw. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. He hits the big target for the two-point try. Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result when he opted for the touchback. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And the busy night for Henry continues. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. This run defense has been pretty stout all game long. Now you're here in the fourth quarter. Should lie more on the passing attack? I don't think you have any choice, and I don't think you have to dress it up at all either. Throughout the first three quarters, you're still trying to convince the defense that you may run the football. That's out the window right now. Protect, let your quarterback go, operate, and try to find some targets in the open field downfield. Third down, it's Willis. And a throw there going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. He'll take it at the 42. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. It's been a dominant performance to this point, Charles, and this is probably exactly how they scripted this and envisioned it. They got a three-score lead, fourth quarter, and a chance if they want to continue to pour it on here. It is their call, isn't it? I mean, the way that they have taken on this game and the way that they have carried this game and have dominated this game, you're exactly right. Do what you want down the stretch. We are in the era of, hey, if you don't want us to do this to you, then you need to stop us. Their call to finish this one off. On play action, it's Mahomes. Taking a deep shot here for Hardman. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. The Chiefs on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and eight. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Mahomes. He's got his man. That's Hardman. Yeah, he's got to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Fourth down, no problem. Just a ho-hum pickup of 14 to keep the offense on the field. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Mahomes. 
Adams going to throw it here. Taking a deep shot here for Hardman. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now it's Mahomes again, taking a deep shot here for Hardman. And this one he incomplete. Oh, he couldn't hang on to it in the end zone, and that's one that'll haunt you. And now it brings up third down. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. Throwing is Mahomes on third. And that will be incomplete. Well, they're up comfortably here, Charles. But that lead certainly not dissuading them from pressing the envelope late. I mean, if anything, with these passes, it's like they're getting more aggressive to try to drive the ball downfield. And that will certainly lend itself to some post-game questions for that coach. And maybe you and I should attend that press conference and see what he has to say because someone's going to ask him why he continued to push it. My guess, he didn't like how some of the snaps were run earlier. And he wanted to use that as a chance to clean things up but he certainly will have some explaining to do. turn it over so they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth but they didn't get it guaranteed it's not going to be a fun handshake in the post game right <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there and i know if we go to the post game press conferences the, the winning coach nobody's going to say why he did it we need the points okay because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs that's always the standard justification Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll run it again with Henry. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge game. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. On the six. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. Henry running right. They find some open field here. Touchdown, Titans. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally on that one. And it's no good. Oh, he misses the extra point, and our score stays right where it is. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Takes it at the seven. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Go. 
The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really... The timeouts here is strictly for show. We got a play in the catch. Throw to target, and it's second down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. And now we're going to get a timeout. Somewhat pointless. Interesting, Mahomes wants to throw it. They'll roll him out right. They said their goal was to win seven games. They've done that pretty early in the year. I think it's time for them to elevate that number and really make a big push to finish the season score.
I come alive in the dark And I keep getting stronger My limits the sky I do the impossible Impossible Shine if I want to I win every time if I want to The world mine if I want to Make the world mine cause I want to Ay, I pull the sword out the border Walk the floor with the covers Go to war with you all We can brawl toe to toe I can tighten loops in my lace And make lightning lose in a race I make fire cool And I come back from the triangle in Bermuda I can suit up, live in the moon up Working and outsmarting computers I can outswim all the tuna And that's without a scuba So in the laws of nature I'm breaking the rules Only thing I'm bad at is being a loser Ay, I can make time travel a surprise Make graveyards feel alive Break the immortal down I'm alive in the dark, and I keep getting stronger. Tonight I hunt with the pride. You can't take my pride away. I can sing with the birds in the trees in the morning, or all like the stars way over the ocean. My limits the sky. I do the impossible, impossible. Shine if I want to. I win every time if I want to. The world mine if I want to. Make the world mine, cause I want to. Even on the days when I'm late as ever, my time and it's right. Even in the darkest moments, stay close, I'm that shine to the light. I can make an earthquake nervous, I can make the sun wear a visor. I can make a wise owl see me as a daily advisor. I'm that cool shade, peaceful night, that's still my breath with a storm, I bet. I can make the thunder clap when I perform, it's just that in the laws of nature, I'm breaking the rules. Only thing I bad at is being a loser. Hey, I can make time travel a from SoFi Stadium. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. And they're led out by the number one overall pick back in 2018, Baker Mayfield. Baker going to throw this right away. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. He's able to knock that one away. To throw on second and ten, Mayfield. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. An early test, two plays in. This is third and two. Mayfield. They'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he's going to have a Rams first down. Defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. First and ten at the 40-yard line. Going to the air again with Mayfield. Got a man open. It's Tyler Higby. So the completion good for six yards. And it's second down. It's a pick up of six. Brings up second now Mayfield has caught it's Ben Skoranek and this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 38 yard line Mayfield looks to throw steps away to his left now Mayfield lost the football and his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. With no running backs in the backfield to help pass protect, all the receivers in their patterns, it's going to be hot routes if they sense a blitz or pressure on the quarterback. They've got to be prepared to break routes off early and get the football. In this case, ah, never even had a chance. They caught the ball free in the backfield. Now here's a pass on first down. It's knocked away and incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Cousins. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. On third down, Cousins. 
Cousins. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his... But how about this, a fake? And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. That's one of those, Charles, when it works, it looks amazing, and when it doesn't, it means trouble. Yeah, you're right about that one, partner, because that allows us to say, what are you thinking when it doesn't work? Although, I know in his mind when he made the call, he was thinking about the amazing part. But in this case, I think the defense, they caught on to this fairly quickly, and they were able to force the incomplete pass. Here's the first carry of the game for Cam Akers. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. A good chance this is four-down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Mayfield to throw it. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. Now this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. It is for baseball. We call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Oh, look at this play call. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. Sean McVay's gamble does not pay off. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. A first down throw for Cousins. Pass is tipped, but he's still able to bring it in. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Cousins on first down. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Following the interception, Mayfield. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Mayfield off the play fake. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. To throw, Mayfield. He'll dump this off to Akers. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. And again, it's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And this returnable for Rager. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and ten. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it. No points going up on the score. No score after one on EA Sports. Cousins now from the 50. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Cousins. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 26. 
Play fake. Cousins. And it's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll throw again. Cousins got his man complete over the middle. It's Osborne. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 12-yard line. Cousins now. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. And it's caught. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And that will bring up third and one. Two minutes gone by the second quarter. On third and one, here's Cousins. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Vikings post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And it's caught inside the five. And he gets in. But no one was expecting a fake there, but they add two more onto their lead. All right, partner, one more time. You put the ball on the three-yard line, kick the extra point. 2015, they put it on the 15 to kick the extra point. 2016, they said, we're leaving it there. So if you want to fake it, that's a long way to go. And they got it done. I was going to say, they had a 15-yard play in their back pocket. <laughs> you don't see that on too many play sheets, do you? No. On first and 10, Mayfield. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. They'll go with Akers here up the middle. And he's going to have a Rams first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing Mayfield. That's complete to his tight end Higby. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield on the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Mayfield from the gun on third down. That would complete to Skoranek. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. 8-0 our score with two minutes left in the second quarter. Going to the air again with Mayfield. Over the middle and complete to the tight end, Higman. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. Throwing again on second down, Mayfield. And it's incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. And able to find Higby, it's complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Here's Mayfield. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Coaches talk about it all the time. Players talk about it as well. Excellent job staying disciplined in coverage and making that stop. Inside the red zone, every stop like that could be preventing a possible touchdown. And they'll get this from the 8 to the 5. Pick up a 3. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now Mayfield on third and goal. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Matt 
Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Got to say, Charles, a little surprising to have a kick this short blocked. Usually that happens on the longer ones, but great job by the special teams to kind of sift through there and get a hand on it. Yeah, you've seen a lot of football over time, partner, and you're right about it. Typically, the longer field goals start lower because they have so much more ground to cover to get to the post. And that's when you get a hand on it. These short ones, you're able to pop it up in the air pretty quickly. Normally, you get height. In this case, extra effort to block that one. This throw incomplete nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. With third down coming up. Third down, Dalvin Cole. And they will bottle him up behind the line. And now will they use a timeout? Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. So good field position for the Rams as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield looks to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looked like a Rams player was able to get his hands on it. Yes, so they will hold on to the football indeed. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. Now Mayfield. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So one touchdown, and just like that, on we head to half number two. Both these teams, no doubt, making their final halftime adjustments as we speak. And for the call of the second half, we get it back out to Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now come the Vikings, they'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Partner, for once in my life, I'll be succinct. In a one-possession game, every single stop like that could be a difference maker. On second down, Cousins again. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. On third down, Cousins. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So pass interference, the call, and that does not look to be going over too well on the defensive side. Or on their sideline, because I believe their head coach is saying right now, hey, you've got to call that both ways. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. As a coaching staff, you can call just about whatever you want because you understand you have guys who rely to take away those massive shots downfield. You're not as worried about giving up the big one. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. That could have been a huge play, but give the defender credit. Stay calm, stay collected, and kept himself in position to make a play on the ball without a penalty. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. I think it's safe to say he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Third down now, but he's four jump. And they're going to fake it. He wants to throw it here. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Vikings come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. 
Joseph connects on the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. So the drive there took six plays. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And a short kick taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They make their second half debut here. Things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked in each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. Now Mayfield lost the football, and the Vikings pick up the football. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. Joseph on for the extra point. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And a short kick taking it about the 16. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Now the Rams offense getting the football back. It's a game that they would rather probably forget about, at least to this point, Charles. And one reason is turnovers. The turnover on the last drive, they had the issue in the first half as well. And that's really, unfortunately for them, helped to put this game out of reach. And you know they won't want to admit it to themselves. But we know that winning the game is pretty much out of the picture now. So their bottom line is how do they play a clean game the rest of this one, right? Take care of the football, no more turnovers, and see how that works. Second down, they'll go with Akers again. And he powers his way up past the 30. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Mayfield. And, oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Here comes Rager. A solid stiff arm. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A terrific return there. 27 yards all told. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now on the run, he'll throw it back deep over the middle. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, even with a huge lead, he was looking for more points. Why did the deep shot downfield? That one goes incomplete. Obviously, he wants to put more points on the board. Throwing again on second and ten. Cousins. And now he'll let this one go deep. Back over the middle. And this is caught inside the five. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Oh, he fakes a spike. And this is caught. So he fakes the spike, and they get the touchdown. Justin get another third quarter touchdown to add on to that lead there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass yeah nor was it necessary his receiver oh they flip it to the kicker he looks like he's gonna throw it it's caught inside the five and he gets in but no one was expecting a fake there but they add two more onto their lead now joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown And they'll start at the 25 as Powell decides against returning it. The Rams ready to go on offense. And we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. 
Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think. Easy to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Mayfield to throw it. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw, Mayfield. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanket in the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Two yards on the punt return. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. I know they're not asking me, but I'll give you my opinion anyway. I think it's time to erase that play from the call sheet. I guess they figure with the big lead they can experiment a little bit. But all in all, just go ahead and put that play on ice. And the hands team for the Rams able to secure the football. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Mayfield on first down. He'll check this down to Akers out of the backfield. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Mayfield now. Open his pal. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And again, it's Mayfield. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They give up the middle to Akers. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Five yards, now it's third and five. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. And again, knocks this one through. And that will finish off this third quarter of play. Back now here on EA Sports. Where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. This fielded right at the goal line. And a pretty slick return there. Almost got it to the 45. Officially, they'll call it down at the 44. At some point, we're going to get it through our heads. Special teams, special teams, special teams. The spark that often wins games. 
Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. The last run got six, now second and four. They run it again with Cook. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Partner, I know we're still in the afternoon slate here. Some primetime games still on the docket, but it's going to be tough to top this effort. What an offensive performance we have seen. They have been unstoppable from the moment we began this game, and they're not holding back. They're still throwing the football here at the forward. They certainly are, and let me tell you something. If you're old school, you don't like this at all, but in today's football, you just go ahead and save her. Watch a team execute at a high level. Doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. A tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And now he'll let this one go deep, back over the middle. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He hasn't been sacked all game, and there's an example as to why. Evaded the pressure, got out of the pocket, but even with the extra time, it doesn't translate into a completion. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. But that's just a minor blip here of what's been a thoroughly dominating performance. And this is a commentary on today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on him, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Well, they didn't fall behind any further thanks to that missed field goal, but still staring at this fourth quarter deficit. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Throwing Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops from one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll set up a throw. Higby secures it over the middle. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And that will be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Just 21 yards on the punt there. And they will take over first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. This has really just been a lopsided affair. What a performance they put on, and now they get the football back here with a big lead in the fourth quarter. You know, in the past, we might be discussing dinner plans, talking about steak and sushi, whatever the case is, CD. This ball game is pretty much well in the books. Yeah, we really could have started bringing up dinner a long time ago if we wanted to, partner. And I think a few of the guys out in the field already making plans for the evening. And the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not totally privy to what went on with their offensive meetings, but Charles, something tells me that one wasn't in the plan. Yeah, when we had our production meeting, they didn't exactly share that with us. But I'm pretty sure that on the play sheet, the run backwards into your own end zone play was not written down. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. 
See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scalded out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this... To see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and ten. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now back to throw. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at about the 14. Thirty-five yards that time on the punt, and the Vikings will be backed up deep to beat. as they take over first and ten. They'll try and wind down some clock with Cook. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. The all-everything defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, the one who made the play there. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. bounds right around the 20. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Out to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. And here's Ryan right now on, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. Hey, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. So the directional kicking problematic there. They're going to spot this inside the 30-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. <laughs> don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for